So now we are in the Japan Sea. On the left is a little map of this the currents that you have in this in this region. Okay, we already talked about the western boundary currents that meet in the adjacent open ocean where the Oyashio comes from the north, the Kurushio, the warm water current comes from the south, and they create the polar front. Yeah. It's shown here on the left side. Okay. However, the polar front also exists in the Japan Sea. The Japan Sea is an adjacent sea, again, that is has a limited connection to the ambient ocean, essentially because of the islands. Okay, well, You have some straits that, that have connections or so, but the, the, the islands limit this the communication. However, from the south, there is a the Tsushima current coming, it's a, which is a branch of the Kuroshio current, if you want. It moves warm water into the region from the south, and from the north comes water, um, cold water comes from the north, low salinity uh, cold water. And you can see this um, structure in, if you look at the temperature fields, and, and it shows you some um, seasonal distributions here. Let's have a look at it. What you see is the temperature at the end of winter and temperature at the end of summer. You can see significant differences in the temperature. Significant differences up to almost 20 degrees. So during winter time, you get very cold water up to zero degrees. And during summer, you get very warm. So how do, why do you get these differences? The differences are partly explained or to, actually to a large percentage explained from limited exchange with the open ocean and something we call shallow water. You have shallow water depths and that constrains the depth of water which interacts with the atmosphere so that in winter the water can cool down significantly more than in deeper ocean regions and during summertime the water can heat up more than in deeper regions. And this effect is what we can see here in the in the northern Japan Sea. And you can also see some flow structure of colder water moving moving along the coastline here in the north. In the salinity field you can also identify features of water movements. You can see the higher salinity water which comes from the south and moves into the in, into the area here can be identified. And the lower salinity water that comes from the from the north, which is a signature of meltwater continental runoff, comes 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 from the north. So let's have a look at some very, very early satellite images where you can actually identify the polar front. Okay? So polar front, come here, let's go. Let's have a look. Very early images from 1981 and 1980, where warm corresponds to water temperatures around 15, 16, 17 degrees, and blue corresponds to water, which is about 10 degrees colder. And this is the polar front. This is two different years shown here, but you can identify the polar front, a transition zone between cold and warm water, and you can identify the creation of eddies. Okay. These, these are the eddies that are created in these frontal flows. And that's, that's, that's a region where you have, in particular in, in Korea here, where you have the 
Temperature changes are significant, can be 10 degrees on relatively short distances of, say, a uh, few hundred kilometers. So that's the Tsushima current and its polar front that forms inside the Japan Sea. Okay.